guys, it's Carly from The Poetry of Nice and today I want to talk to you about bread and butter brands. So I got to thinking, this bread and butter term is something that we hear kind of flying around a whole lot on YouTube and other content, Instagram, all that kind of stuff when it comes to reselling. Um, but do we really know like what it means, at least to us personally? I wanted to show you guys today what bread and butter brands mean to me and exactly what bread and butter actually stands for in terms of my business model and the items that I pick up. First things first, if you are new here, welcome. It is so nice to have you. This is a channel all about reselling online. I am a stay-at-home parent, um, a mother to three boys who are five and under. I stay home with them full-time, but I also sell part-time on three platforms online, which is eBay, Poshmark, and Etsy. And um, by doing that, I get to contribute financially to my family, um, and I get to help pay for vacations. We are almost done paying off our debt, thanks to, in large part, the income that I'm bringing in. And and it's just an awesome experience all around and I really enjoy the thrifting and um, I like to show you guys haul videos, I like to show you guys sales videos and a lot of how-to in between. So if that sounds interesting, I would love it if you would consider subscribing um, and coming back and checking out some more content all about how to make money online while you stay at home. All right, you guys, so first things first, what does bread and butter mean? What a question. So here's what bread and butter brands mean to me. It means that the items are plentiful, i.e. I can find them often and I can find them at a low cost of goods, i.e. it doesn't cost me very much to buy them. And um, it also means that they have a good sell-through rate. So for me, that's basically like six weeks and under I would expect the item to sell by. Obviously, plenty of these items sell within a week, within a day, sometimes, if I'm lucky, um, and sometimes they take longer. But to me, six weeks and less is worth my time for the five minutes or so that it takes me to photograph, measure, and just do a quick listing of an item that I'm very familiar with. And just like that, I want to touch on as well, bread and butter to me are items that I am familiar with already, which means that the listing process for me is a very minimal one. That means my research is next to nothing. I'm familiar with the brand. I'm familiar with the styles. I'm familiar with um, their sort of market value currently. And um, I feel comfortable listing them pretty much without having to pull comps and things like that so that my process is a very speedy one. So when it comes to bread and butter, I think brand differ for everybody. It really depends where you source and it depends what you find um, often and what kind of prices you can get it at. Um, but for me, it is also ever evolving. And that's kind of what I wanted to touch on today as well. Um, as we watch these videos or we share each other's content, mine included, there'll be plenty of items where I tell you that, you know, they sell well for me, they sell quickly, that this is something I pick up all the time. But the thing is, that changes almost constantly depending on what the market is demanding at the time. So bearing that in mind, I am going to tell you a few brands that currently uh, are what I consider to be my bread and butter and then I'm going to share with you as well a few brands that I used to think of as bread and butter but I really don't consider that anymore because they're just not really moving for me right now. So brands I really like to sell. Um, Talbots, that may be a surprise but the larger size Talbots for me I can find it cheaply um, and I can find it in abundance pretty much. Church rummage sales are definitely a place that I find that, or estate sales. Anything that has, I suppose you could say, a slightly older demographic donating um, their nice clothes, their quality, and when I can find them in those larger sizes, and I'm going to mention larger sizes a lot, I'm afraid, but I'm talking kind of XL and up, um, are what really have that like quick sell through rate for me. So Talbot is the first one in larger sizes. And I would probably pay anywhere from like $2 or below for Talbot, depending on what the size is, what the style is, what the fabric content is, and what kind of shape it's in. The next one I'm going to mention to you is Land's End. Again, this is almost the same kind of crowd that I would consider that would be shopping for Talbot's. And again, I'm going to mention those larger sizes, XL and above, especially like 1X and 2X in these brands tends to move really quickly for me. And when I say really quickly, I mean within a day or two, I seem to be getting either offers or in fact these are brands that I often get um, full price purchases on and um, I will say that this is primarily on eBay that these two brands are doing well for me right now however I have sold both of these brands on Poshmark as well so it's definitely not exempt. The next one I'm going to mention to you is Hot Cotton and um, I mentioned this in some of my haul videos, some of my sales videos. If you're interested in seeing any of those I'm going to go ahead and uh, link those playlists down below um, but Hot Cotton um, especially depending on the fabric content if I can get a linen blend that's even better um, but those are that is a brand that has done pretty well for me and again larger sizes helps but it's not the be-all and end-all so that's one I look out for 
American Eagle jeans, that's what I'm going to mention as well, and there are some very specific parameters uh, that I would put to that. So $2 and below is what I would like to have in it in terms of um, cost of goods. The style is pretty limited right now for me in this, um, in terms of being pretty much just skinny jeans or jeggings. And if they are high rise or incredibly distressed, those are bonuses and definitely something that I would stop and take a look for. I'd even potentially go as high as like $4 or below and um, with something that is like a high rise, skinny, heavily distressed. Like that would be, uh, that's like, the uh, the holy grail I think of American Eagle jeans for me right now. <laughs> I also want to mention in part with that as well that does apply to denim jeans for me as well by American Eagle so if you're getting the high rise again and um, heavily distressed there's one out there called the festival which is uh, has always done well for me and those ones again as well two to four dollars probably close to the two dollars actually that is what I would um, go ahead and pay up for those as it were um but again they seem to move quickly especially depending on season but spring summer fall even uh, they do tend to move quite quickly for me and um they're just so simple and easy and like i said i'm super familiar with them now next thing i'm going to mention is clark shoes and sketcher shoes so they are two brands that i find almost every single yard sale I feel like I go to, absolutely every rummage sale. I swear I find them all the time, Clarks and Skechers. Um, and it almost doesn't matter on the style. I have sold anything from boots to sandals, to work shoes, to comfort shoes, uh, and anything in between. I usually pay $1 or below for either one of those. There are definitely some styles that sell better. The Shape Ups, you get them in like the uh, flip-flop style or the sneaker style in Skechers, they do pretty well. Um, then Clarks, I've done pretty well with like the booties or the artisans or like some of their comfort shoes. But really overall, both of those brands do move for me on both eBay and Poshmark. Um, so $1 or below, I'll always grab them. They are quick to photograph. It doesn't seem to matter if they have minor flaws. I'm talking minor, like, you know, light scuffs, like marks, things like that. And they always sell for me around the $20 to $30 range. So that's pretty good. And the last thing I'm gonna mention isn't really a brand, so brace yourself, but it's vintage fanny packs. I don't know why, but they just move pretty quickly for me and they kind of always have. Um, hopefully that will continue into 2019, but I sell them on Etsy primarily, but I have started to list them on Poshmark as well and started getting some interest. And I always cross post them on eBay as well. Although to be honest, they're like the market just demands less on eBay for those. I guess it's more saturated or just the different markets, different demographic, I suppose you could say. Um, but Etsy, absolutely about $20 every time is what I list them for and Poshmark, I'm testing the waters right now. Okay. And last but not least, I'm going to share with you a handful of brands that I think are bread and butter, i.e. I have been thinking of them as bread and butter for a really long time, but in reality, they just don't move for me like they did and I kind of need to just step away at this point. Brand number one, Ann Taylor, Ann Taylor Loft. I always find it cheap. I always think the styles are cute most of the time. Even when it's like the newer labels, they just seem to sit for me. And when they do move, they move for a small amount of money, i.e. between like 15 to $20. Um, if I get, can get them in like in a filler bag or 50 cents and below, and it's a really cute style, or if it's a novelty print, a novelty print I will pretty much always pick up. Um, but other than that, I always think think oh it's you know a great filler item but it just sits and sits and sits for me in the same vein banana republic it does the exact same thing um, unless i can find a fabric content in banana republic that is fantastic i.e like merino wool or cashmere with no holes and um, or even the men's items do okay for me with banana republic but other than that again it just really sits especially the career wear Victoria's Secret. The swimwear kind of does okay for me still, especially when it's like particularly in season, even if they're separates, um, probably anywhere from like 15 to $25, depending on the style. And if I have the two piece or if it's a one piece. Um, but in general, Victoria's Secret clothing in all its shapes, unless it's like super blinged out. And even then sometimes it just doesn't move for me anymore. Torrid. This used to be one that I would like swear by if I could get it for even like $4 and below. It moves so quickly for me, like almost same day sometimes, especially with it was when it was in like a size three or something, you know, a higher size. It just moved really quickly. And now I feel like I can hardly give it away. Um, it's really selling at low prices and it's just taking forever to move out of my store in both eBay and Poshmark. So Torrid is definitely one. Unless it's like a fantastic novelty print or it's a really, really current style, I'm just staying away from Torrid for the most part right now. 
J. Crew. I know, I know. I used to love picking up J. Crew, and there's so many styles out there that I absolutely love, but I have pieces that I think are just wonderful. Cashmere blends, fantastic novelty prints, larger sizes, all this kind of stuff, and it's just not really going anywhere, and it's really not getting much interaction on Posh either. Not many likes. Despite other people sharing it and me sharing it every single day, multiple times a day, so I'm definitely starting to think twice about some of the J. Crew pieces. I even have a few wonderful jackets and coats, stuff like that, with great fabric blends, and um, that just they're just not going anywhere. They went through fall, they went through winter, and with almost no interest. So that's a real shame. Um, but J. Crew, I am watching out for. Even J. Crew collection, truth be told, even though that is incredibly expensive, um, I am second guessing it right now, depending on how much it costs. Because again, even though it sells for an okay kind of price, um, ugh, it just takes me a while, truth be told. The one exemption to the J. Crew rule. I will, that's a mouthful, that I will share, is the shoes. The shoes seem to do really well for me, um, especially if they're the ones that you can get, they're like made in Italy, like the leather ones, even sandals and things like that. Now, those still seem to move pretty quickly for me, but everything else, uh, I'm sort of thinking about it a little harder now. And last but not least, Chico's. All my days. <laughs> save me from Chico's. I still pick it up. I honestly am not entirely sure why. I think it's just I went through a period where it was selling really, really well for me and I was finding it everywhere I went because we have sort of a, an older community around where I live and so I was just finding it all the time, really, really cheap. Um, and then it just kind of died a death for me a little bit. And so I still tend to pick it up and I, again, I'm not really sure why. I'm not sure that I should be necessarily. Um, but Chico's is one that just it barely moves me and when it does it's for a really small amount of money so I really need to uh, stand back and take um, stock of my time and the effort that I'm putting into some of these brands and probably um, start looking for some new bread and butter pieces I suppose um, and just kind of keep my ear to the ground and see what all is moving on each of the platforms that I sell on. Okay you guys I hope that that was helpful I would love it if you would comment below and let me know what are your bread and butter brands now I know you might not want to share them all and that's fine keep your cards close to your chest I get that completely <laughs> but if there's anything that you do want to share or even items that you used to think of as bread and butter and maybe you still pick them up they just don't move the way that they used to for you and um, please feel free to share that down in the comments I would love to hear about it it would be super interesting to do that to share that um, and please if you enjoyed this video give it a thumbs up subscribe if you haven't so you could come back and hang out and guys it has been so nice talking to you and I will see you soon bye bye